girls get to install the first ever supercharger kit on a 991 GT3 RS. This German sports car is going to make some major horsepower to the rear wheel with the help of some American muscle. And for today, um, I have the absolute pleasure of riding in the passenger seat of this incredible freaking bright purple Porsche race car. Oh my god, this is, this it's is incredible. It's incredible, and it is not just any Porsche, oh no. or any purple Porsche oh for no. that matter. This is a 2016 991 GT3 RS, which means that this is like the best of the best, the fastest of the fast. This thing is feeling. So what the heck are we doing with it aside from just enjoying it? Well, you know, 500 horsepower, seven minutes on the new ring. We thought, you know, why not do more, right? So, very exciting. We are going to be the first, the first to put a supercharger on this thing. So this is going to be pretty incredible. We're thinking that it's going to add another 100 horsepower, which is a huge jump. The expectation is to get 600 on the wheel. I mean, yeah. that'd, be, that'd be pretty freaking sweet. I mean, I'm not complaining about what we've got already, but why not add more? <laughs> and to that, shall we uh, head back to the shop? <laughs> oh, do we have uh, No, we don't have to. We can go get ice cream first. but I could definitely get used to driving this thing. <laughs> I'd be, like, so scared about scratching it or parking it or anyone, like, getting near it. I think that this would, like, raise my anxiety level and also, like, raise my ego a little too much. I can change the core of who I am as a human. I don't know, I don't know that it. I'd ever actually park it. I would just keep driving. But being as it was that much fun as it is, like, I cannot wait to drive this thing with the supercharger. It's going to be sick. Our first order of business is to take this whole fascia off, which of course in true simple. Porsche fashion and German engineering fashion, if that is not such a simple procedure, we've got to get it up in the air. In order to do that, we need to take the wheels off. We need to take them off while it's down on the ground. Also because sounds simple, right? Just taking off the wheels, no big deal. Right? Sounds like no big deal. But yeah. it is a single center lug, basically. And it is put on with a gazillion. A gazillion. <laughs> this is going to be really entertaining to watch us with our little spaghetti arms try to get this loose. It's gonna take a lot of leverage. <laughs> it's like, that's more foot pounds than like both of our weight combined right? with like, you know, our work boots. But you know what? Give me a lever long enough and I'll move the world. Yes. So let's do this. <laughs> oh. Now that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is I the tool. I really like this better. Ah, what are you doing? I'm trying to get this cover off. Girl. Oh, excellent. All right, set this in there. All right, I'm about to do leg day for like the entire week. Okay. Mm. Yeah, buddy. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Right. All right, nothing else connected. It is a very long, very long hold. Oh, there it is. Wonderful, like. precious. This is our beautiful new supercharger setup for our GT3 RS. Now this, or a similar kit, was put on a GT3 previously and did some heavy testing, but this is the first time going on a GT3 RS, which will make this car the one and only supercharged GT3 RS out there, and I'm super excited about that. Makes it a little stressful, but. <laughs> a little stressful, but also it just means like we're super special. So Absolutely. I'll take, I'll take that. Now this, of course, is our supercharger and for you folks at home this is a supercharger not a turbocharger it looks very similar however it is belt driven which makes it a supercharger and it's kind of fun because this is a little bit of a mashup of like american muscle you typically see these on american muscle cars and we're putting it into this fine piece of german engineering so a little bit of meeting of the two worlds yeah, we, might, <laughs> we might make some people upset yes. we shall see <laughs> but i love this design too uh, we've got this damper pulley and it's got one pulley for all the accessories and then one specifically for 
for the supercharger. So this is like a really nice design, nice setup. We also got an air to water intercooler system over here and the water pump as well. And uh, a ton of stuff. A lot of stuff that's all gonna have to okay. fit in that car. Now I do also have to correct something I said earlier. Oh. What is that? So in the car, when we were test driving, I said that this was going to add about 100 horsepower to the car. And it turns out I was totally wrong because it's more. even better than that. Excellent. It's going to add not one, but 200 ah! more ah! horsepower to and this car. be the first car with this kit in it. I mean, come on. Ah! All right, let's get installed. Can okay, we? Can yeah, we? Can yeah. we? Well, well, we can't install anything. No, yet. we got to take a bunch see, more apart. There's a ton of stuff here and not okay, a lot of room. No, let's so. go take okay. stuff off. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, so last nut, here it comes. Okay, pull this off. Now I gotta get the vacuum line to clear. Oh my goodness, that was a task. All right, so now that we got all of our brackets out of the way, our factory brackets, we can see, ha, oh, here's the front of the engine, um, or I guess the back of the engine. Yeah, or the front of the engine <laughs> in the back of the car. And now I'm gonna install my harmonic balancer. Now this was the original crank pulley. And what's cool about this design is we've got like these six bolts and a pin. And this is actually like the most perfect situation for a supercharger pulley because, you know, we think about normal crankshafts and normal crankshaft pulleys, and you're gonna have one bolt in the middle and a little woodruff key. And with a ton of torque application, that can actually start to hollow out and wear itself away. And then this can actually spin and uh, actually cause quite a lot of damage to your crankshaft. And we don't want that. So this is actually already freaking perfect because it comes with a pin. Here, we've uh, already installed one little bracket because when this pulley is placed to the end of the crankshaft, we won't be able to actually use the factory mounting bolt for those original plates that I already removed. So this is in place. And I've got my belt already installed and it's taped here just to make it easier for me because there's a very little clearance here on that on that bracket. But this is all gonna fit absolutely freaking perfectly. So I'm gonna grab a bolt and I've already got my inner belt routed where it needs to go. And I'm just gonna line up that little pin. I can see, but I'm not very tall. Oh, perfect. Get all of them started by hand first. Faye has piece number one of the supercharger kit installed, the first of many. And after the break, the girls work on relocating the throttle body and bolting on the supercharger. Anytime you're thinking about towing, there are some things you need to keep in mind before you hit the road. First, you need to make sure to hook up the trailer properly. Most trailers have two chains that hold the trailer to the vehicle if the ball hitch ever detaches. It's a good idea to cross the chains over each other before hooking to the trailer hitch. That way, if the tongue of the trailer should fall, it would land on the cross chains and not hit the ground. With all this extra weight added, it puts extra stress on things like your truck's brakes. So make sure your brakes are in good working order. PowerStop's C36 truck and tow kit is perfect for heavy-duty applications. Their brake upgrade kit comes with everything you need, including pads and road mountain descents. And the slots wipe away gas and debris for smooth braking. Once the brakes are good, confirm you have the right tire pressure and you're ready to hit the road. This all-girls garage tech tip is brought to you by PowerStop Brakes. Brake upgrades made easy. We have done a ton already to this Porsche. Obviously, we've gotten our kind of subframe or bracket back in, so the engine is back up and secured in its spot. We also did some plumbing that really wasn't all that interesting, so we didn't want to bore you with it. But and it sucked. So and it kind of sucked. We didn't yeah. want you guys to like. Kind of required a lot of tiny hands getting into small spaces that you wouldn't really be able to see. But what we did was put a little T and check valve into this line, which is basically your EVAP line. And the reason why that's important is because obviously on a naturally aspirated vehicle, not a big deal. Now this is supercharged, so we've got a ton of pressure going in here. We don't want pressure going into the EVAP system. <laughs> Next, we've got some parts over here on the table, and you're probably wondering, what the heck are all of these? Um, this is like weird purple pipe. 
First of all, first of all, it's purple. <laughs> it's purple. Um, second of all, <laughs> so we're going to be relocating the throttle body. This is going to get right in the way of everything that we're going to put right in the front of the engine. So, um, front of the engine, back to the car. Yeah, that'd be great. Since so, closer. this little guy is cut out to give us access. Oop, get it the right direction. And then, of course, we've got a lot of tight things that we've got to work around. Because, again, we're jamming a whole lot of stuff into a very, very, very small engine compartment. So, that's going to sit right about that there. Awesome. That looks so and awesome. And it makes clearance for all the rest of our stuff that's got to get right. in there. And then as soon as we install that, we're going to be installing this plate, which houses, of course, um, some rocketry and a tensioner Jeez. for the um, drive belt for our supercharger. So, we'll all right, I got the bowl. Okay, <laughs> let's just go for the end. All right, so now is when we both make some people very, very happy and piss some other people off. We're used to that. Right? By putting this American muscle-style supercharger in this from an engineered vehicle. So we'll see how that goes. You guys be the judge. But this is our lovely supercharger. And there's some, you know, interesting things that we can say about this specific supercharger. One, we've got it apart so that we can index it appropriately on the vehicle where it's going to meet up with the intercooler. But it's kind of cool to see this exposed compressor, yeah. isn't it? It's super pretty. It's beastly, right? <laughs> we've got a little mark that we drew on it because we were curious, just because, you know, we're mechanics and we have curious minds. Um, this right here is where the pulley is going to sit, exactly, and that's, of course, driven off of the crankshaft. But we want to see how many revolutions. One full revolution of that shaft equals 4.1 turns of this compressor, so four times what the crankshaft is spinning. This is spinning pretty high, and it is allowed, it's able to do, I think it was like just shy of 1,300 max CFM. It can handle 32 PSI of boost. And we're going to be operating at like eight. So that's way within range of what it can handle. And I think it is safely rated up to 900 horsepower. I oh, know, right? So you think about how high this thing revs to. If we've got eight or 9,000 RPM times four, that thing's going to be spinning at 36,000 RPM. That's freaking insane. Another cool thing okay. that we've got on this supercharger, which really helps in our certain situation, is that like, you know, I mean, you've seen us install one of these before on an American muscle car. But the, <laughs> so this, this is familiar to some of you, but this has an internal, it gets oiling system. Yes. So we're not hooking into the car. We're not trying to run more lines anywhere. We just have a little drain right here to make it easy to change the fluid, yeah. um, which will hopefully be done by the owner at the regular service <laughs> interval. What do you think? We... One would hope. And it also helps us accommodate this in the tiny space. Exactly. Like, it yeah. looks like this isn't going to fit. No. It will but it look... will. And it's going to really? look awesome. Freaking awesome. All right. So and we're going to get this in part in place okay, first. So um, bowl, take it yeah. Start that guy, if you want to get that in the spot. Yeah. And then this guy. Line up with this Perfect. There we go. All, All right. right. Could we index down just a little bit more? Or is that going to get us in between? Right, like in line. Yeah. I think right there is going to be the Okay. Easiest. All right. Let's uh, make a little mark. You got a pen? The supercharger is clocked and ready. And next, Faye and Bogey go to work on the heat exchanger up front to keep the system nice and cool. some more work to do back in the engine compartment, but there's kind of a major component that we're going to do up here in the frunk, which <laughs> is our whole cooling system for the air to water intercooler setup. Right. Deal. Which we already mounted in the back. So we got yes. that in place. Now we're going to run some lines to the front because we have <clears throat> this oh. guy to my, oh, all of the things. <laughs> we have all of these things. <laughs> I've got to mount this. For that. <laughs> now, obviously, we want air to flow across this really well, so we're going to be removing the front bumper and sticking this heat exchanger in the front. Actually, I don't know which way it goes. I haven't read the instructions yet. But I'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, instructions. We'll this out. is a brand new kit. There are no instructions. <laughs> there aren't. We literally are figuring this out as we go. <laughs> and then, you know, we have some options, and I think the designers of this kit, you know, realizes that you can put the reservoir in the back, you can put the water pump in the back, you could, in theory, even put the intercooler or the exch heat exchanger, excuse me, in the back as well. But for ease of accessibility components and make sure your water pump is moving, you could just touch it rather than having to dig for it in the engine compartment. We're going to set all of this stuff kind of nicely back in here. And then obviously heat exchanger will go there. And then yeah, you've the got water that pump's cool little fit water pump somewhere in there. And you know what? Somewhere. Like that, that's really, that's an awesome thing to, to mention is that, you know, a lot of times like as mechanics, you sort of curse engineers. Like, why do they design that like that? Uh, in this case, there was like actually a lot of thought 
like how this is gonna work, being able to check on it, being able to check fluid level and also like, you know, check proper operation and stuff. And yeah. I thought it was really thoughtful design. I, I, I like this, so. And it's cool that it's kind of a separate system from the rest of the yeah. holding system. It's its own standalone deal, own standalone reservoir, water pump, all other things. Lovely. Oh, awesome. Every little inch of space is kind of like being accounted for. It's kind of crazy. Yes. And our walking quarters. A little further. Now Mike's leaking. Because <laughs> you just, said something. No, it's because I just disconnected mine and mine's leaking. Okay. All right. Um, yep. All right, so we got our front bumper removed. I still a wash fluid on the floor, no big deal. And uh, then we just removed this last little trim piece here and a secondary piece that clips onto one of our radiators. Yes. And we use that to install right here. Attached to our heat exchanger, which makes this install really kind of convenient. Oh, so, nice. so this is actually just gonna pop right into place. And of course, we've got this ducting right here, this silver colored ducting, which is actually gonna help direct the airflow past the heat exchanger to the front radiator rather than having the air just disperse all over the Absolutely. place. Absolutely, yeah, much right. like a fan shroud that everyone like pulls off the radiator right yeah. away and throws away. Exactly, yeah. that actually serves a purpose. <laughs> yes. so, all right, let's get this bad boy to clip into place here. All right, so this, in theory, will pop right back in. Okay, I got my bottom lined up. Snap. Oh my God, look Crackle. at that. Pop. Oh, and that is like secure. Yeah. That is going nowhere. And then it'll all get like... sandwiched in with the fascia. We'll get it plumbed and a nice high quality piece. I, I dig it. That. Most of the prototype supercharger kit has found a home on the GT3. All that's left is modifying the air intake, slapping in a tune, and this race car is ready for its first shakedown run. I always say that keeping up with regular oil service intervals is the most important thing that you can do. But even if you keep up on those intervals, your oil can still degrade and oxidize because of the constant heat, pressure, and stress on your oil, especially in today's modern engines. Slow down this process with Hotshot Secret FR3 Friction Reducer. It's going to strengthen your and improving horsepower. Hotshot Secret has found FR3 to reduce engine wear by more than 40% than compared to using oil alone. Get better fuel economy and horsepower too with FR3 Friction Reducer. All right, we got all of our stuff on the front end taken care of, all of our heat exchanger and all that other good stuff. And so now it is time to install the baby dragon. Actually, that's not what this is, but it looks like it, doesn't it? Does, it? it is yeah. so cute. So <laughs> this is basically, obviously, our blow-off valve, as well as our piping up to the throttle body. However, what you'll notice is these two funky antenna on top, which is not actually antenna. These are additional fuel injectors. And so basically this engine is a GDI engine or gas direct injection. And as we add all of this new horsepower with the supercharger, we run the risk of kind of maxing out the GDI injectors. And so installing two port injectors up here does a couple of things. One, we can add more fuel to the system without maxing out the main injectors, but also it gives room for more upgrades down the road, adding even more horsepower, doing even more fun stuff with this thing. So this is a cool little feature uh, that gives us some flexibility. Now, normally this thing, and I say normally because this has been installed on one other vehicle before, not the like we mentioned, um, the turbocharged model, which in that case has ducting and the intercoolers in here. This car is a little bit different because the air intake system is on the outside. So this kit that was installed on the other model, this pipe fit perfectly. In this case, we have this intake tube that we're gonna have to modify. Modify, not just remove, because there's some heat shielding here that we think is kind of important. Uh, so instead, I'm just gonna remove it and we're gonna cut through this probably very expensive plastic. <laughs> not nervous, do you wanna do it? Do I'm, I'm down for cutting. cutting. Everything is so tight. So tight. Oh, yeah. Clearanced. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. I was like, wait a second. So now we have all the 
major components of our supercharger kit installed. Freaking fantastic. And now all we have left is a little bit of plumbing and some wiring, and we're gonna be driving this thing on the road again, and I'm so stoked. I'm so excited to <gasps> drive it. You wanna do hosing and I'll yeah, do wiring? Sounds great. All right. <laughs> I don't know that hosing is an actual phrase, but... <laughs> Probably not, but... <laughs> yeah! Again, okay. all right, we got everything plumbed up, we got all of our electrical wires routed, and did a quick plug-in tune, which came with this kit, which, like, overall, I mean, we talked about this kit for a second. This kit was amazing. Remember, guys, this is the first time that this has been done yeah. on a GT3 RS. Absolutely. So our builder was actually kind of, or the designer of the kit was using this as a little bit of an R&D car. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't really find any issues that needed to be addressed. I mean, little equipment here and there, but like, I mean, overall, like we install a ton of kits that are meant to be for a specific car, right? They're installed like 50 million cars out there. And then we still find ourselves just like racking our brain to figure out how to make things fit, modify things, shorten things, whatever. This is totally different. So it just goes to show how much hard work they put into this thing. Yeah. So I'm really impressed overall. Yeah, ton of work to install it, but every ounce of it worth it. So and I don't I know. think we should go test it out a little bit. Of course. This is going to go straight to the dyno after this. But for now, we are going to do less play. talk and more go fast. And we will see you guys next time. Be jealous. Bye. <laughs> go for it. Go for it.